My name's Judy Wellsman. I'm European Welfare and Admin Manager for the Donkey Sanctuary, which is based in the UK. And I live here in Cyprus and oversee the Donkey Sanctuary Cyprus operation, which is a subsidiary of the UK. Donkeys were used for, and still are used for, anything from getting some people shopping, their mode of transport, they can be used for collecting firewood, olives, grapes, um, carobs. They're still used up in a lot of the villages. We take in rescue donkeys, unwanted ones, ones that have got poor health, ones that have been neglected. And also we operate a very important outreach program and that is where we go out to villages throughout Cyprus with our farrier, with our vet, and we give free treatments to working donkeys so they will get their teeth done, their hooves checked, any wounds attended to. We give advice to the owners, any help that we can provide, we will do. This is Helena, our little foal, and her mum Effie. And Helena is the very first foal born to Donkey Sanctuary Cyprus. We've never had a pregnant mare come in before. Donkeys being donkeys, they do like to wait until the conditions are right. It's very quiet. And sure enough, Effie waited until the weather warmed up and gave birth overnight. Little one here, she was up and wandering around not like us humans who take ages to stand up, you're up in an hour, aren't you, and able to run. She's been very curious, very friendly, not at all frightened of anything, and bit by mut, bit, mum got used to us going in and handling her baby, and she's an absolutely fantastic mother. And she's now three months old. And over the last month, she started to be able to eat a little bit of her mum's food, which mum isn't over happy about, and she's gradually getting a full set of baby teeth. So uh, we're really pleased with how she's doing. It's been very exciting. She's, she is quite cheeky, like most babies are. And uh, mum's trying to teach her some manners. So when you get a bit boisterous and a bit naughty, mum tells you off. You've spotted the goats now, haven't you? You've seen the goats. Uh, this here is the newest donkey we've got. This is Tobias. He's owned by a priest and uh, the priest uh, had discovered that he was losing a lot of weight and couldn't work out why. So he contacted the donkey sanctuary and we sent out a vet and the farrier and discovered he'd got um, quite severe feet, uh, hoof problems and uh, quite severe dental problems. And uh, when he came with it, he was in a terrible condition, just with sort of weight loss. I mean, he was weighing 144 kilos. Uh, he's now up to uh, 160 at uh, the last weigh in. Tobias, he's a sweetheart actually, he's really affectionate. This is Yanni One Ear, and Yanni, a number of years ago, about 17, 18 years ago, a man tried to buy him from another man. Um, when he got told the price, he said it was too expensive, so he came back in the middle of the night with a knife, cut his ear off, went back the next day and said to the bloke, Well, now your donkey's only got one ear, nobody else will buy it, and you can sell it to me cheaper. He told me to get lost and another nice man come and bought him and worked him for a couple of years and then brought him to retire at the sanctuary and he's been here ever since. Yanni's a lovely donkey even though he's been cruelly treated. He loves people, he loves strokes and cuddles. The only thing he doesn't like is when it rains he runs indoors because the water goes right inside his ear because he hasn't got the cover over it. Donkeys will question what is the point in doing something? And also, they've got a, a very, very strong self-preservation thought process. So if they feel that something really is not safe, whether it is to walk on it, um, go past it, if it's not safe for them, they won't move. You learn to read their body language when you're working with them. And you do get to know your individual donkeys. Um, each holding base has got 34, 35 donkeys and the people that care for them for us, they know each one's behaviour, its little habits, what its characteristics are like. And that goes a big way to help in diagnose if there is anything wrong with the donkeys. With donkeys, I mean, donkeys are very, very uh, affectionate. I mean, if you sort of rubbing slightly on the inside of their ears, normally they'll just relax. At first, obviously, he's a little bit concerned because he's got a camera, but they, then, they generally like petting. They love, they love being groomed. They love being stroked. Um, they're just really, really affectionate creatures, you know, and, and cheeky as hell. They're great. 
Um, so he used to be on his own and I used to go in the field and just sit on a rock and he would come over and I'd just sit there and stroke him on around his ears and his head for like 10 or 15 minutes and he was just wanting company. He just loved, loves people, don't you, mate? When you get a situation like this, like with this guy and with Heladonis, um, and you really think, I don't think they're going to pull through. They're thin, they're under, massively underweight, health problems, you name it, and then you manage to turn the corner with them and you get so rewarded, two very thin donkeys that we thought we were going to lose, who've come right, who like people, don't you? And you, you make it all worth it. Thanks, really. Really do. He's a lovely chap. Absolutely lovely. It just took a long time, but we got there. We run purely on donations, and it's the generosity of the public that help us do the work that we do. Um, in Cyprus, we're very fortunate. We do get a very small donation from the government, and this year, or last year, from the government veterinary department, which helped a little bit, of course. To support us, you can adopt a donkey, which is one of our most popular schemes, and that doesn't mean to say you're taking a donkey home. Um, for 20 euros a year, you can get a certificate of your donkey with the story of how we ended up having him. Some people do fundraising events. They'll have coffee mornings or they'll... We've had somebody cut their hair. It was a gentleman that grew very long hair and he got a sponsored haircut done. Um, any way really of thinking how you can promote our work as well. So existing supporters, we always encourage them to tell other people about our work because without that support, one, we can't look after these guys. Secondly, we can't help other donkeys on the island. So it is vital that we do encourage supporters to help us so that we can carry on doing the work that we do.